So first I'd like to say that I'm on Tango Land. My name is Wiklawa, I'm a Nahuatl language, language teacher. And uh, I live on Tango Land, Los Angeles, California. Uh, I am from Mexicali, California, which is Kumaya land. And um, thank you all. I am excited. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, for your willingness to learn this beautiful language as well, and to uh, you know have some sort of uh, going back to our roots collectively. So I'm excited that you all are here. I'm excited to see everyone's uh, presence. Um, uh, some housekeeping tips. Uh, if you hover over in the middle of your screen, you will see a mic. So if you can please go ahead and click on the mic and mute yourself. We would like to cancel out any background noise like at all. Um, so we can go ahead and go to listen to every lesson. Okay. So, thank you so much. Uh, so let me just go ahead and start sharing the screen. One moment. So we will be learning the Nahuatl language. Um, so first of all, um, it's also important to honor where you live. It's important to acknowledge where you live uh, due to the um, to the uh, you know what has occurred on these lands in regards to uh, the genocide that has uh, been continuing on these lands as well, um, and also. Um, if like to find out where you live as well as uh, what land traditional lands you live you can go to this link native-land.ca okay so you can go there um, check if I'm recording. I, I still hear some background noise so if you can please mute yourself hover over in the middle of the screen and click on the mic okay thank you so much Um, so, first of all, what's a language? Okay, so it's a form of communication between a group of people, right? It's, it can be oral, like I'm talking to you right now. It can be written, you can write down what I'm saying. Um, and there's also grammar to it, right? Like I, I'm talking as opposed to I talked yesterday. It helps with communication. Um, but there's different types of languages, right? There's uh, gestures you can you can uh, have with your own friends. There's also, you know, uh, American Sign Language. You know, there's a lot of sign languages as well. Um, you can communicate the present, the past, and the future uh, with a language. Now, in regards to uh, the within the borders of the colonial Mexican state, there are 68 indigenous languages, um, and the these can be divided into 11 language families. Okay, so we have all the way from the tip of the Baja Peninsula all the way to the tip of the Mayan Peninsula. These 68 languages can be divided into 11, into 11 language families. Now, what's a language family? A language family is a group of linguistically linked languages that come from one ancestral language. Now, we are familiar with the English language, right? So English is part of the Indo-European language family, uh, and all those languages are in uh, Europe as well as uh, parts of Asia. Um, now, with Nahuatl, it's part of the euro aztecan language family, or euro nahuatl in Spanish, and they are in the green. Okay. And it goes beyond the colonial borders. It goes all the way up to uh, Utah, Nevada, and Idaho, Wyoming, 
all the way down into El Salvador. So you see it in the green. So where is now what's spoken? Now it's spoken in different parts of Mexico and it's important to note that it's parts of these states, not the whole state. Okay, Estado de Mexico, Puebla, Guerrero, Hidalgo, Veracruz, Oaxaca, Durango, Morelos, Tlaxcala, Jalisco, Tlaxcala, Nayarit. Um, and there are 1.5 million speakers. There's also figures of 1.7 million speakers. Um, so close to 2 million speakers. Okay. Um, so historically, who, who spoke Nahuatl? Uh, most indigenous, uh, the most popular indigenous group to have spoken now were the Aztecs, or they called themselves the Mexica. Um, now, it was used as a lingua franca, a common language for indigenous groups across Mesoamerica to communicate for trade, for politics, uh, etc. It's exchanging information. Now, Mesoamerica is mostly what's now Mexico, also, also parts of what's now Central America. Uh, other indigenous groups that spoke now were the Kashkan, Alcoas, Tlaxcaltec, and among others. Now, who speaks Nahua today? Now, uh, modern Nahua speak uh, Nahua, so people who speak Nahua today. Now, they can be divided in different regions of Mexico. So we have Nahuas del Alto Balsas in Guerrero. We have Nahuas de la Sierra Norte de Puebla. We have Nahuas de la Huasteca. We also have Nahuas de Texcoco. Uh, Nahuas de Milpa Alta in Mexico City. Nahuas de la Montaña, also in Guerrero. And also Nahuas de la Costa Sierra de Michoacán. Now, think of a language as a tree. And the variants in the dialects are the branches. So, for example, we have English. We're familiar with English, right? So, um, there's American English. There's Australian English. There's British English. And I mean, within that, there's also divisions, right? So, someone from the East Coast as opposed to someone from the West Coast. Uh, also, someone from Washington State as opposed to someone from Southern California. Now, Nahuatl has 30 modern variants. Um, and each one... Um, has their its own denomination. Uh, some call it Mexicano, other call, uh, there's other ones that are called Mexicanero, some would just call it the Tlaxcal language. Now we teach um, the Nahuatl from the Huasteca. The Huasteca is parts of Tamaulipas, San Luis Potosí, Hidalgo, uh, uh, also parts a little bit of Puebla, um, also uh, Veracruz. Now, all the native speakers of the Huasteca that speak Nahuatl live in these three states, parts of these states right here. Okay. And specifically, we teach the one from Chicontepec, Veracruz. Now, Chicontepec means, uh, it comes from Chicome, which means seven and Tepet Hill, and the C is N, so in the seven hills is what Chicon Tepet means. Uh, views from this town, you will see seven hills. The largest one is considered very sacred. Uh, there's a corn deity, Chico Mishochit, and it's a corn and fertility deity. Uh, now the cultivation and veneration of corn is central to all Mesoamerican cultures. Uh, now the indigenous people of Chicon Tepet are no exception to that. They continue to dance and pray to the corn deity. Um, also, you know, as well as, you know, in our food as well. Uh, as for, us, for us, you know, city people, we, you know, we eat tacos, we eat tamales, also pupusas. A lot of foods that, have, that come from corn, right, that are made out of corn. So also, you know, have that in mind as well. So here is a picture of the town of, Ch of the city of Chicontepec. So these are the seven hills right here. T 
platform. So this is one of the now it's one of the Azteca diaries, Chico Mexochitl. Um, and um, like I said, they continue to dance and pray for the corn deity. This is a ceremony for Chico Mexochitl, the corn and fertility deity. Now, part of the ceremony is to create an image of the deity with paper. Um, so, uh, language can be, you know, can be uh, manifested into, you know, paper. You also, you know, uh, now was from the past, also built statues. So, in the Huasteca, they still do ceremonies. Unfortunately, some of these ceremonies are dying away due to uh, indigenous people moving into cities and also due to um, the city itself moving away from their traditions and uh, being Castilianized, um, which means um, speaking Spanish and just moving on to Christ uh, ca ca Catholicism. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and play this video. It's a short video. You will notice a petate, which is a mat. You will notice some soda. You will notice some water, a candle. You will also notice an incense burner, uh, which is a copalero, a popochcomit, and nahuatl. So I'm just going to go ahead and play it for you.
So that is part of the ceremony for Chico Mishochik. Now, another way of learning is also to listen to audios of the language that you are learning. Um, so um, this uh, SoundCloud account is from the Instituto Nacional de los Pueblos Indígenas, so the National Institute of Indigenous uh, Nations in Mexico City. So I'm just going to go ahead and play you some of these audios. Now, most of these audios are, the, all of these audios are about COVID-19. Most of them are talking about to keep a social distancing, to stay in your community. There's also some about uh, 911 calls. So I'm just going to go ahead and play it. Instituto Nacional de los Pueblos Indígenas, México. No yo y de hecho, al tepe mayor, vamos a hacer igual de cuál de estos toques de ya cinco goles de coronavirus. Tal día, tigas y de hecho, se semana o cal tepe, si me ocupa mogalistic y cuacio pano con cogoles. Mate que panita gasten que esto va ante que guacame y de hecho, al tepe mayor, va si me ocupa mogalistic. Si que hay tan apatente que bajame, que tan que todos que es que manía y igualite este que me tate y mucha nescaba. Tan aguatiscapa Instituto Nacional de los Pueblos Indígenas de que guasten tan apatía México. Tochana y Cagua, Shkilna Mikika, Paya Juan Tucalpajo, Cachihuelis, Techasis, Unco Colislit, le toca coronavirus. Tlatine mi huesca, no sopan oxe calpa, amos mucuepa Paya Juan Tonalme. Matica Kikatla en Quistoa, un tequihuasque, Tlencatepa, un calpasme, Juan Keno, Yehuame, Mutlaspia. Shmucagua, Pamocha, Juan Chiama, Quistoca, un tequihuasque. Instituto Nacional de los Pueblos Indígenas. Gobierno de México. Tehual y mi juante, Shimat que el que de Niquín Pueblo, más igual me, Walicatías que incocoliste de Niquín Coronavirus, de Niquín País que el o de Niquín Mo Pueblo, Shibi Jaruti que el de Mo Palipías que Payel Niquín Cuarentena, Tic Respetarotías que de Niquín Medida, Control, Cati Chantil, Shimuka que el Cajacal que el, Quien Salud que el, Ten lo que te Nahuatitías que Yel Niquín Seguro, al más igual me Cayuno Chantil que el. Instituto Nacional que el de Niquín Pueblo, más igual me Gobierno de México. Un coronavirus llegó a un cocolistri a quien hueles y te casis que to chantlacaguan y cuanto calpame la tibia me ha netlacuitlacuilistri. Y palmaca te casis que un cocolistri, maticacamatisque, no chitlatoli, clin, te chilitoque, to huele tlayecante patilistri. Ismocagua mochan, ismocagua mocalpan, ismateki momaguan y cachapo, macati mopepecho, sanaquino. Y cuanto calpan, timo tlacuitlacuilistri, tinochime. Instituto Nacional de los Pueblos Indígenas. Gobierno de México. Un coronavirus llegó a un cocolistri a quien hueles y te casis que to chantlacaguan y cuanto calpame la tibia me ha netlacuitlacuilistri. Y palmaca te casis que un cocolistri ma titlacamatisque no chitlatoli clin te chilitoque to hueye tlayecante patilistri. Ismocagua mochan, ismocagua mocalpan, ismateki momaguan y cachapo, macati mopepecho, sanaquino. Y panto calpan, timo tlacuitlacuilistri, tinochime. Instituto Nacional de los Pueblos Indígenas. Gobierno de México. Huele a este que en cocolis de coronavirus, campa amo maasi en agua tochanescaba y guanto al tepeba. Taleatica y techuxe se manao caltepet, shimocopa mocalistic y cuacio pano con cogolis. Shimocaba mocalistic, shimocaba y techmo al tepe mayoba, shimoma paga, 
Instituto Nacional de Niquín Pueblo Masigualme, Gobierno de México. Un coronavirus, un seco colistit lenguelis tictelpisque. Chica amo que masis, nos amo asis, campa chanti un tuteishmatkawa, pain tu calpahua. Chica hualis timutlas piasque, monekish kake un tlas tolit, len kitemaka, kin tequiwasque, no son un tlapastisque, len kate pain tu tlaltikpak. Shmukawa en pamocha, shmukawa pamukalpa, shkimpaka mumawa, amo shmupacho campa uxeki masewalme, pantocalpa timutlas pianti nochti. Instituto Nacional de los Pueblos Indígenas. Gobierno de México. Un coronavirus llegó a un cocolistín a quien hueles y chicasisque, tochantlacaguan y guantocarpame, platipia, miac, netlacuitlacuilistli. Y panmaca, tincasisque, un cocolistli, matitlacamatisque, no chitlatoli, lin, pechilitoque, no huele tlayecanque, patilistli. Ismocagua mochan, ismocagua mocalpan, ismateki momaguan y cachapo, macati mopepecho, sanaquino. Y pantocalpan, timutlacuitlacuilistli, tinochime. Instituto Nacional de los Pueblos Indígenas. Gobierno de México. Ne coronavirus ne seco colistit lenguelis de quispoliwiltise panto caltico an panto chinanco. Para ti momana huise, moneke te llegó a ser noche tlenqui tu hasta nahuati anime. Shiitz to mocha, shiitz to pa mochinanco, shimoma papaca. Ashkana shimochka hui campa itz toque miak más egualme. Panto chinanco, noche tlacame guansiguame ti momoku tlaguia. Más egual la nahuati cacali tlen mexco tlali. Gobierno de México. Tetas tu toni ya que tu pitili, si que colistica te hueles y te cotonilice, tati mucagua se pantucha, te hueles tu monaguise, munich te cacalica, cate mis portelia, hueca pante que cal de milistri. Chimucau calistic, chimucau pomotayual, chimatiki y cachapo, abuch munishkawica y camuan puyua. Pantayualme, no chitim cotahuya, más se guatequicale, Instituto Nacional de los Pueblos Indígenas. Gobierno de México. Huelitis tixacuilisque en cocolisle coronavirus, campa amo maasi y nahuacto chanecaba y guanto al tepeba. Taliatica y techuxesa mnao caltepet, shemocopa mocalistic y cuagio pano con cogolisle. Shemocaba mocalistic, shemocaba y techmo al tepema yoba, shemoma paga, huesca mate motitoga y guanto yo licniba, y techto al tepegua, te no estente momalvía. Tanahuaticapa Instituto Nacional de los Pueblos Indígenas. Tequihuatlenta Navatía, México. Y el presidente municipal y lo y el juez comunitaria, si se de Nixihuat, si guatonte o adolescente, sufrirá que el maltrato y distiptiasque o abuso sexual. A Mushishka que le dice, chitasto para el 911 para que Tignahuate y Nagiel institución que podrá que palegüe. Para que el jornada de Nix tan a distancia, tigues que Nagiel violencia hacia de Nix, si guan que el de Nix tu pueblo. Shimuka que el Nixcajacal que el Shimuka de Nicamo Pueblo, Instituto Nacional de Nikin Pueblo, Nikin Masigualme. Gobierno de México. Te llevas a Tilanca Tequitiquet y Juan te llevas a Tequitiquet. Las de Nana, Siguapi, Poste Chipucas, Quiselia Tawilana Listi o Quitlaca Yahuistía. A Mushikawa y Seli, Chifalewi, Tentitanos Nosas y Fan 911. Tenquefa, Kinechkawite y Café Tequicale, Catihuelis Kipalewis. Y Pajino Tapitla Wiltonale, Timos Tentilice y Catatacuita Wiranaliste y Cananame y Panduteyuanjua. Shimokawa y Panmucha, Shimokawa y Pamoteyuan. Mexico Tequicas Tenticama Sewaleguani Impi. Gobierno de México. So that's, those are some audios that you can hear. Um, next, we will go over t with some um, what I know, what I call Nahua Spanish words. So Mexican Spanish words with Nahuatl origin. Now, if you are, if you speak Spanish, um, or if you're studying Spanish, um, 
especially uh, Mexican Spanish, um, you will see that you are already speaking a form of Nahuatl, but in a Spanish way. Uh, so we have aguacate, right? Aguacate comes from aguacat. Aguacat. Elote. Right? Elote. Um, just to make sure, can everybody see my screen? I just want to make sure that everybody can see my screen. Just give me a thumbs up. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, elote, right? Elote. Elot. Elot. Molcajete. Right. And this two way you can make some salsa, some guacamole. It comes from molcashic. You have papalote, which in Mexican Spanish it means kite. And it comes from the word papalot, which means butterfly. Then we have chocolate. Okay. It comes from chocolate. Then we have tomate. And it comes from tomate. We have tamal, it comes from tamali. And we have comal, and it comes from comali. Hikama, one of my favorite treats during the summer, hikama, comes from shikama. We have tianguis, which is an outdoor market. And it comes from tianguis or tianguisli. Okay, now, the last one that we have here is coyote, and it comes from coyote. Okay, now these are just a couple of words. There are other words as well. Um, just to point out that you know we are in some way speaking uh, this uh, language that was a lingua franca uh, of what's now mostly what's now Mexico and also parts of Central America. Um, so, like I mentioned earlier, I am from Tlazo Tapasoli uh, and speak Nahuatl.com. Tlazo Tapasoli means language nest, and we are now at study collective on Tongva land. Tongva are the original people of these lands, uh, and uh, we are located in Los Angeles. Um, we teach at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, which is a, a Mexican American, um, Spanish speaking native. Uh, Museum in downtown LA. Um, and we also teach at Pasadena City College. Uh, unfortunately, now because of uh, COVID 19, everything has turned into online instruction. Here are, if you go to the PDF, here are some links. This is, this is our website. This has all the class links. Um, you can find us on Facebook, you can find us on YouTube, most about three, three of us or four of us, we have our own YouTube channel. Okay, you can click here for all the resources. 
uh, we also have a new website tlatlotepasoli.com now this one um, it has resources to learn as well okay, so you can also go through this as well on your own time it has grammar it has vocabulary it has classical noun vocabulary so this is something that you can all go to as well let me just go ahead and send it to you in the conversation so you can have it as well okay um so going back to the history so now it is part of the euro second language family uh, these languages are located in parts of western and southern turtle island which is modern western u.s mexico and el salvador uh, the northernmost language is uh, Shoshone, which is spoken in Wyoming, Idaho, Nevada, and Utah. And the southernmost language is Nahuatl, which is spoken in El Salvador. Um, and like I mentioned before, uh, a language family has one common ancestral language. For this language family, it's the proto euro uh, or the precursor, the first language of this family and uh, many have theories on where it started and where it originated um, some say it originated in central mexico while others say it originated in southwestern u.s uh, and in terms of time some say anywhere between 3,000 to 5,000 years ago uh, and like we mentioned like i mentioned before it was lingua franca the common language for people to communicate uh, most of these uh, indigenous people had their own language, but they also spoke Nahuatl. Uh, now, it continued to be used as a lingua franca up until the 1800s. The Spanish missionaries used it as a tool to further evangelize the native population. Right, So in order to take down a culture, you have to learn it. Um, so that's what um, the Spanish attempted, but our languages are still alive. Um, now, there's classical Nahuatl variants versus modern uh, variants. Now, classical Nahuatl variants are now extinct, meaning they are no longer spoken. Uh, these variants were spoken in the Valley of Mexico and Central Mexico. Um, the most closely related uh, dialects today are from the one from Texcoco, the one from Milpa Alta, also more uh, parts of uh, Morelos and Guerrero. Um, now, classical Nahuatl is uh, known, uh, these variants are just collectively known as classical Nahuatl. Um, and it was known as a Tecpilatoli, or the language of the, the nobility, specifically the Mexica nobility. Uh, now, the rest of the population spoke a Masahuatlatoli, which is, was more of a common person speech. Uh, so, kind of uh, maybe comparing it to Shakespearean, Shakespearean English. Um, so, uh, in terms of classical Nahuatl, uh, now most of the modern variants, like I showed you the list of the dirty variants, come from this Masahuela Toli. And because Mesoamerica is large, these variants evolved independently from each other. Um, now, there are officially 30 variants, but some native speakers speculate that it could be up to 40. Uh, the area with the most concentrated Nahuatl speakers are parts of San Luis Potosí. Hidalgo and Veracruz. Uh, like I mentioned before, this area is called the Huasteca, and also it's also made up of parts of Tamaulipas, Puebla, and Querétaro. Um, the other variants, like I mentioned before, is, are Puebla, Morelos, Guerrero, Milpa Alta, Mexico City, Estado de México, like the like Texcoco, uh, Colima, Michoacán, Jalisco, and others. There are over 1.5 million speakers, according to the INALI, Instituto Nacional de Lenguas Indígenas, uh, in what is known as now Mexico. And that is not counting the Nahuatl diaspora across the world, uh, meaning people that live outside of um, Mexico. Um, now, there's also figures of uh, 1.7 million, so uh, there could be up to 2 million speakers. Okay, so the next is a Nahua Spanish word so with Nahua origin. Most of them we already went through. Uh, the ones that we didn't go through are cacahuate, right? It comes from Tlalcacahuatl. 
then we have cacao and it comes from cacao Next, we'll go over now what sounds, uh, the TL sound part one. Um, so the TL sound is, this sound is not in English, it's not in Spanish. Um, so it's the first one that we like to go over. Now these are the steps to be able to, pr to say, uh, to pronounce this sound. Okay, um, so first let's get into the errors. That, so English speakers tend to add a vowel sound between, so you hear something like it's al cuaro um, or nahuaro. Uh, Spanish speakers tend to pronounce it separately. Nahuatl. Um, so the first step, and I encourage you to say to do this a lot as well. First, the first step is to take note that it's one sound. The second step is to make a T sound, okay, like the word totally minus the vowel sound, okay, so just t, t, t. The third step is to make an L sound. Uh, uh, uh. Again, without a vowel sound, okay. Now the fourth step is to combine both sounds quickly, okay. So You will, uh, your tongue will be in the back of your upper teeth and a little bit below. So, okay. now second part. Now to practice this sound, uh, you must also know that the uh, the vowel sounds they are pronounced like in Spanish. Okay, so like in Spanish. These are the, all the vowel sounds in Spanish, okay? And they are pronounced A, E, I, O, U. A, E, I, O, U. Okay? A, E, I, O, U. And just like in Spanish, these vowel sounds never change. This will always be pronounced as A, this one E, this one E, this one O, this one U. Okay, so linguistically, uh, linguists say that there is no U sound in Nahuatl, but you hear it. Okay, now, now that you know how they sound, you can combine them with the, with the TL sound. Okay, I also encourage you to say this out loud too. It doesn't matter if it's perfect, you know, you're just starting this course, so it takes practice. Okay, now? So, tla, 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 tle, 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 tlo, tlo, tlo. Clue, clue, clue. Okay, so tla, tle, tle, tlo, clue. Tla, tle, tle, tlo, clue. You can also switch the vowel sounds with TL sound, meaning the vowel sound first and then the TL sound. Okay. At, 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 et, 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 eat, 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 ot, 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 ut, ut. Ut. At, et, eat, ot, ut. At, et, eat, ot, ut. Tla, tle, tli, tlo, tlu. Okay. So this is an exercise that you can do uh, every day to improve your 
TL sound. And you've already said two words with this exercise. At means water. And et means beans. Part three. You can practice, you can also practice with these four words that describe uh, people, an animal, and an object. So, first one is see what. See what. So, this is like a W sound. See what. See what. See what. And then we have. Uh, this is what a weapon to propel spears. This weapon is still being used. Um, however, you will hear it pronounced atlaro, which is incorrect. The correct pronunciation is atlat. 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 Okay. So this one has two TL sounds, right? Inside of the word and also outside. Atlat. And the next word is coyote, 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 which means coyote, and in modern variants it means city person, coyote. And then tlacat, 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 okay, which means man, okay, so. You can practice with these words as well. Siwat, atlat, koyot, tlakat. The other sounds in stress. Okay. Now, a brief history on the writing of Nahuatl. Uh, Pre-colonization, um, it was all pictorial. So if there was a mountain and the mountain was, let's say, full of stones, a mountain would be drawn full of stones. And let's say they are telling a story, so they would draw footprints and then to the next destination and they would draw how it looks. Now, when the Spanish arrived, the Spanish friars, um, were uh, would write in Latin script, so the uh, the Spanish was written in Latin script. After a Spanish was standardized, it was written as classical orthography. So all of our all of our materials are in classical orthography, meaning how classical now it is written. For later on, further um, once we get more into grammar. Uh, it's better, it's, it's easier to explain with cl classical orthography. Now, one thing to note, you will see Z's, you will see Q-U-E's, you will see Q-U-I's, so it's from Spanish as well, right? So, also, you know, and like in Spanish, the, the Z is always an S sound, okay? So the next sound is similar uh, with the T, but with an S, okay? So. The next sound is a TS sound. And um, we're familiar with the word pizza, right? So it's just the second part, the second syllable, tsa, tsa, right? I will tell you what these words mean after. This is just for practice, right? Tsa. And also with these sounds, you can you can incorporate the vowel sounds too. So tsa, tse, ti, tso, tsu, right? So this word is tsotso, tsotso. And then tsakwa, tsakwa, tsakwa. And then we have the X sound. Now the X sound is always a sh sound when you're shushing someone or like the word shoe. Right? Ashkana, 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 ashkana. And then shochik, shochik. Shot cheek, And then, shoshok tik, shoshok tik, shoshok tik. Alashosh, alashosh, 
alashosh. The next sound is a ch. Like in Spanish, is a ch. Also in English, is a ch sound. So this is more of a broken sound, more of a sharper sound as opposed to the X, which is more like shh, right? So chocolate, chocolate, right? Using the vowel sounds, cha, che, chi, cho, chu, chocolate, chocolate, and then chantly, chantly. Chantly. Okay. Also, uh, with this uh, with this orthography, you will see two L's. Now they will never be pronounced like the J in Spanish. They make two L sounds. Okay. So this word is noyolo, noyolo, noyolo. And then tamali, tamali, tamali. And then masewali. Masewali, Masewali, and then Tlapiyali, Tlapiyali, Tlapiyali. Okay, so now this is the fundamental rule, so it's important to note and it's important to uh, maybe uh, as you are uh, getting familiar with the sounds and pronouncing it, also uh, this will become second nature. Now, there is no accent marks in Nahuatl. Um, the stress is a fundamental rule, and um, this is how it works. Right? So we have these, these words. I separate them into syllables, and the capitalized part is where the stress is. Now, this is not normally how it's written. This is only for purposes of showing you where the stress is. The stress will always be in the second to last syllable. If it's a two syllable word, it'll be on the first one. Okay. So right here we have the word no nansin. No nansin. No nansin. Right? It's not no nansin, it's not no nansin, it's no nansin. This is an example of a two-syllable word, right? So, koat, koat, koat. Right? It's not koat, it's koat. Okay, and then this word, no yolo, no yolo, no yolo. Right? The last two words are uh, two-syllable words, so they're both on the first one. Amo. Amo. Tlai. Tlai. Okay. So we can all go over the stress with the word, the rest of the words. Okay, no? So we have so so, right? Two syllable words stressed on the first so. So so. Two syllable word as well. Sakwa. Sakwa. Right? not sakwa, it's it's sakwa. Okay. Three syllable word here, the stress will be in the ka. Ashkana. Ashkana. Um, and also just forgot to mention so this word has the sh sound and the ch sound. So this word is shachik, right? Sh and then ch shachik. Right? Two syllable words stress in the on the show. This one is a three syllable word, so the stress will be in the shock. Shoshok tik. Shoshok tik. Three syllable word, the stress will be on the la. Alashosh. 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 This one is also a three syllable word. Chocolate. Chocolate. Stress in the go. Chocolate. This one is a two syllable word, chantly. Chantly. Okay. And then, tamal. So, stress, three, two syllable word, is, I mean, this one is three syllable word, tamali. So, stress in the mal. Tamali. Tamali. And then, 
Masewali. 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 And then, Tlapiyali. Tlapiyali. Right? The stress here is one, two, three, four syllables. The stress will be in the wal. Masewali. Tlapiyali, one, two, three, four syllable word as well. So the stress will be in the yal. Tlapiyali. So here are the words. These are the meanings of the words. So, sotso is bat, the animal. Sakwa is to close. Ashkana is no. Amo is no. Shochit is flower. Shoshoktik is green, the color. Alashosh is orange, the fruit. Noyolo is my heart. Tamali is a tamal or tamali in American English. Masewali, indigenous person. Masewali. Then tlapiyali, a domesticated animal. So like a cat, a dog, or any farm animal like a pig or a chicken. And then nonansin. Nonansin. So every time you see the tsin, and now what? It's equivalent to ito or ita in Spanish. So this one, nonansin, literally means in Spanish, mi madrecita. Right? So in English, it would be like my dear mother, my little mother, my beloved mother. So it has to do with uh, it's diminutive and also honorific. Right? And then koat, snake. Tlai, uncle. Kuali, good. So also within our classes, we incorporate gestures because it does help with learning. So um, if you can follow along, so quali, good, quali, quali. And then um, sampa, again, sampa, sampa, sampa. And then seyok, next, seyok, next. Sayuk. And then Tlaskamati. Thank you. Tlaskamati. Tlaskamati. And then Ashlen. Right? This is a response to thank you. It's like saying the nada in Spanish. Ashlen. Ashlen. And then Kenna. Kenna. It means yes. Kenna. Kenna. And then we can move on to the pronouns. This will be the last part. And then we can move on to maybe some questions that you all have so far. We can set up a little bit of time for that as well. So we have na. Okay, I see we have, there's three messages. So let me see if there's any issues. Okay, so there's a question that I see already. What word would we use if we're talking about a non-binary person? So that's a good question. So non, okay, so in regards to non-binary person, um, in modern Nahuatl, there's a combination of indigenous beliefs and they also adopt Catholicism. Now, in Catholicism, as well as most religions, religions across the world, um, it, the binaries are well established, right? So there's this, a, this is what a man does. This is what a woman does. Uh, so the woman stays at home and cleans and maybe helps out with, uh, with uh, the, the, you know, the, the planted fields like corn. And the man goes out and works. Um, and tends for the family, brings in uh, the, the, the domain, the money. Um, so the concept of a non-binary person does not exist in Nawa, uh, modern Nawa cosmovision. Um, Fernanda, let me know if that answered your question. So, um, however, 
um, in terms of pronouns, um, there is no him or her. Okay, so this is the last one we'll go over. So we have na, 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 right? And then ta, you, ta, ta. A third person is ya, him or her. Okay, so there is no him or her, it's just ya. So na, me, ta, you, ya, him or her. And yes, we can do this. Uh, you can go ahead and type in your question in the chat, and I can go ahead and answer it. Okay, no? um, now to say us, do Juan thing, us. The Juan thing, us, the Juan thing. And then, in mo Juan thing, in mo Juan thing, you are, in mo Juan thing. And then the last one is them, in mi Juan thing, them, in mi Juan thing, in mi Juan thing. So again, the plural pronouns are to Juan Ting, us, to Juan Ting, in Mo Juan Ting, you are. So you all would be like the equivalent in Spanish, ustedes. So imagine you sitting down, there's a group of people in front of you, in Mo Juan Ting, you are, ustedes. And let's say there's another group of people off to the side, they are. In Juanting, them, ellos, ellas, ellas, in Juanting. Okay, so let's do a review. In Juanting is them, in Juanting is you all, the Juanting is us, ya is him or her, ta uh, is you, na is me. Very right, basic words I would like for you to use in class as well is kenna. Yes, can na ashlen nothing responsive to tlaskamati, which means thank you. Seyok is next. Seyok. And then sampa again. Sampa. And kuali. Kuali. So the words that are based on basic words are amo, which means no, and ashkana, which means no. Ashkana, Amo are the same. They both mean no. Um, Ashkana is regional to the Huasteca. And Amo is across all variants. Although Amo can be seen as a, like a harsher like no. Um, but they're both understood as, as no. Okay. Okay, so we have another question. There is Ya and Inihuantin also refer to inanimate objects or are those words specific to humans um kenna so they're specific to humans yeah so ya is him or her and mi juantin is um them ellos ellas ellas uh-huh kenna okay um okay we also went over the the sounds right the tia sound tsatse tzitzo tsu the sh sound, sha, she, she, sho, shu, as opposed to the ch, which is a broken, more of a broken sound, right? So, cha, che, chi, cho, chu. The double L will always be a double L sound. No yolo, tamali, masawali. And fundamental rule, um, bookmark it in your, in your mind. Uh, the stress always second to last syllable. If it's a two syllable word, always on the first one. Okay. Um, and then some words, we went over the TL sound, so I suggest that you practice this as well. Um, so with the vowel sounds, right? Tla, tle, tli, tlo, tlu. Switch it around. At, et, it, o, tlut. Right. We went over some Mexican Spanish words, which if you already know Spanish, we are in a way speaking some sort of Nahuatl, right? Now what's like Spanish? 
classical Nahuatl is no longer spoken. It was spoken by the Mexica nobility. And modern variants, there are about, about 30 modern variants. And one thing to note, uh, because it's, there's such variety in this language, it's best to stick to one variant. So that's why if you search anything, how do you say this? And now what you will find different ways of saying it. So it's best to stick to one. And then you as you go along, you will be able to understand other variants as well. Right. So in terms of history, um, some say it started 5000 years ago. Others started say it started 3000 years ago. And in terms of where it started, some say it's Central Mexico, others Southwestern US. Um, and yes, so you have this website. It's in the Google Calendar um, reminder I provided. So these are all the resources that we will be using. I want to keep all the resources that we will be using in one place. So here it is. Um, and yeah, let me just go ahead and send it in in the chat and also as I'm doing this um, if you have any questions you can do what Fernanda and May did and um, type it in the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask me the question right now so that now would be the best time uh, I have a question this is Carolina Biali Carolina Biali uh is the language Zapoteca of also now I was just wondering because I had a room eight in college that spoke uh, Zapotec, I believe. So I was just wondering. No, it, it's not part of the Euro Aztecan language family. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, it's it's from a separate language family. To be honest, I'm not sure which language family, but no, it's not part of the Euro Aztecan language family. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I believe, let me see, let's look at the map. Yeah, it's part of, I believe it is part of the Otomangue. So it's spoken in this, in the, the language, that language family is in the pink areas here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ashlyn, another. Okay. Any other questions? No? Okay, well, Tlaskamati, I appreciate you all being being here. I appreciate seeing your faces. I wish that I was in the classroom, but we can we, we can we do what we can uh, and use technology to also connect to our our roots. So Tlaskamati and uh, Timoitase, we'll see each other. See you all Monday. Have a good weekend.